Hello guys, my name is Nick and this is Nick Creation Channel. Pag-usapan natin ngayon itong Axie Infinity Animal Crossing and Pokemon Inspired Game which is itong ang Playermon Evolve, Battle, and Earn. To be honest guys, hindi ko talaga na-review itong game na to for several months. For some of you, alam nyo na part ako ng team na to. Makikita nyo ako dito as production growth officer and hindi nga ako nakadocs dito and yung background lang naman nito is binigyan nila ako ng role dito sa project na to na I can schedule after my work para hindi magkaroon ng negative assumption while doing this hassle so hindi ko rin dinox yung sarili ko so that's one of the reason kung bakit yung ibang mga projects they are not showing themselves lalo na kung affiliated sila sa mga known company Before the end of this video, pag-usapan natin ano ba yung mga pros and cons. Ano ba yung opportunity for earning sa game na to? Ano ba talaga yung mga risk and reality behind creation of blockchain games? Para sa background ng lahat, ang mga teams na important sa isang NFT game, syempre kailangan natin ng mga founders. Ito yung mga executive positions within the organization. Example, yung CEO, Chief Creative Officer, yung Chief Technology Officer, and other founders within the team. A team na magpo-focus dun sa design, sa arts, sa game assets. And then, kailangan din natin ng blockchain developers. And ito nga si Jisheng and yung team niya. Kung maaalala nyo guys, nagkaroon din ng movement within the organization. Wherein, dati si Joseph yung CEO. And then, pinalitan na siya ni Jisheng. Ginawa yung change para sa mas makakabuti sa project. Dahil nga si Joseph is more on the creative side of the project. And si Jisheng naman is technical but with also experience in project management and business acumen. When it comes to the game studio, sanay na talaga sila dito. Dato Rayson Wong, meron talaga silang game studio before. For a decade, kasama niya to si Leong Ki, na capable din to deliver the technical side of the game. This is together with his team, dahil nga sa professional side ng work niya, talagang nagde-develop sila ng game. Isa sa mga reason kung bakit hindi ko to pino-promote dati dahil ino-observe ko pa ano ba yung magiging direction ng project. Especially once na ma-release ko kasi yung game na fini-feature natin sa YouTube channel natin, may la malaki talaga yung chance na some of the members of the community will also join the project. So alam niyo naman guys, as much as possible, we want to mitigate the risk doon sa mga pinopromote natin hindi lang to basta kitaan and iniiwasan natin yon guys na mapahamak yung mga audience natin before nakita ko dito na hindi lahat ng developers are fully booked sa project but in reality dahil nga yung experience ko is IT manager there's a possibility na you can handle two projects at the same time this takes dedication and hustling talaga para makapag-deliver So si Leong Ki, ganun nga yung setup niya before. Meron siyang company nun, after his work, gumagawa siya for the player mon. Actually, this is the same case don sa akin dati. Na habang tinitingnan ko yung space na to, ginagawa ko yung mga engagements related player mon after my work. Pero nakita ko rin kasi yung effect kapag wala tayong focus don sa ginagawa natin. So piling-pili lang talaga yung mga task na pwede natin gawin. But now, inabsorb na rin nila si Leong Ki within the project and they've created a team around him para suportahan in terms of game design and game development and sa creative side naman guys wala akong masabi kila Krista and Seng in terms of developing the game assets and even yung sa website so sobrang capable talaga nila and they're able to deliver what is expected isa rin guys na nabigyan natin ng opportunity sa project na to si Joshua kasi yung isa sa mga naging role ko dito is ako yung tumutulong sa executive para makipag-usap dun sa mga venture capitals or some of the influencers or talents na gustong makipag-partner sa project and isa nga doon si Joshua Mosca na naging kaibigan natin, Pinoy and siya yung gumawa ng mga furnitures sa Playermon game titingnan nyo pa yung ibang mga profiles nito guys and pupunta kayo doon sa white paper, andun yung mga link ng LinkedIn profiles nila and mas makikita pa natin yung mga background nila some of the people here are really experienced from the traditional games or even sa NFT side like for example Street Fighter Splinterlands and other projects. Some of the artists here like the 3D animators are also helping other NFT projects and they are really capable 
nakita lang talaga natin na downside dito is how committed the people are within the project and we can only prove that after a period of time una hindi rin ako ganoon ka confident about the marketing team although magagaling yung mga members natin dito like for example most of them are teachers or professors yun nga lang meron ding mga graduating students na nag-start pa lang din sila na mag-work sa workplace and yung gap dito before is merong barriers ng communication between the marketing team and the dev team pero eventually the project found a way to fix this by ensuring that the marketing team members are able to connect with the dev team and the executive roles within the project. And also, they have appointed a new Philippine marketing manager na si Ann Carino, who is also passionate about crypto, have experience in the marketing, and even yung tinapos niya na pag-aaral is related communication, arts, and management. So in terms of people, tool, and processes dito sa side ng people, makikita naman natin na committed talaga yung mga tao behind the project. Based on my observation, dahil nga some of the people in the creativity side and the game dev is more on the traditional side. So, hindi nasisira yung focus nila in building the features of the game and release one feature after another instead of, you know, just waiting for instead of focusing on the economy and the market which is currently down. And what is good here as well is si Ji Sheng, yung experience niya sa blockchain and sa crypto is a lot of years na rin. Kaya nga, ang effect nito, he knows how to manage the expectations although sobrang marami guys yung nagmumura sa kanya cursing him about the current situation of the project but if we will look at the other NFT games masasabi natin na they are developing and they are having good progress compared to the others dahil ngayon nakikita na natin yung game and in terms of the play to earn kumikita na rin yung iba through its secondary token which is yung SGEM most of the people are freelancers may tendency talaga na one person is taking multiple roles or getting engagements from other projects ngayon kung gusto natin na that's the ugly side of this and kung gusto pa rin natin na magtiwala sa mga projects or sa teams then it should be long term and dapat naintindihan natin yung risk ngayon mahalaga dito is ownership, responsibility and end to end accountability ng project team kailangan ma-remove talaga yung mga barriers this is subjective and hindi to ganun kadali na makikita and kadalasan, hindi na to visible sa atin as investors outside the project. Kaya sobrang laki talaga ng risk, lalong lalo na kung wala sa control and influence natin. Makikita natin guys na people doesn't want to go a project that is just a copycat of other projects. So this feedback is being received well by the project team and syempre they want to build their identity and of course they are honest that at the beginning it's really inspired by Axie Infinity. Although that's the reality naman sa game industry wherein most of the games are inspired with other projects. Kung tatanungin natin kung legit ba tong game na to actually this is already listed sa CoinGecko sa CoinMarketCap para magkaroon tayo ng tracker ng tokens natin. The tokens are also available sa Gate.io sa MEXC Global and then sa QuickSwap. So ito yung mga central and decentralized exchange nila. They are also available sa mga NFT marketplace, yung sarili nilang marketplace which is Radix Marketplace, the OpenSea, the Tofu NFT and then yung Lutex people are looking for the contract audit and this project has been audited by Certi. Actually, this is one of the proof that the project is serious because they are paying a lot of money just to be audited by known security companies like Certic. These are their supporters from Launchpad, from Venture Capitals, and other entities. Nasabi ko nga sa inyo guys, ito yung nagbibigay ng fund para sa mga projects and important important na makip ng mga projects yung fund nila whatever the situation is whether it is bullish or bearish para ma-insure nila na mapapasweldo nila yung mga talents nila makukover nila yung mga services or technology na kinukuha nila for the project and para continuously nasusustain nila yung development ng project they are also seen from Yahoo Finance, The Coin Telegraph, Market Watch, Alcoin Buzz, Boston Herald, International Business Times, and Star Tribune. If we are going to look at the roadmap, it is true, guys. So, maraming mga milestone na na delay and maraming mga changes along the way. 
Ay lang observation ko, it's already proven na kapag nag-develop ka ng game and you are really serious on delivering, dun lang nakikita ng mga projects na hindi talaga madali mag-integrate sa blockchain. Even to forecast and plan ano ba yung mangyayari dun sa economy ng game and how they can keep it sustainable. Uh, ano ba yung mga game mechanism, burning mechanism, and ano ba yung mga magiging utility ng tokens. And the saddest part of it is, it's true guys. So it's really guess and check, trial and error, looking at the best practices from other projects, learning from the present situation. Reflecting on the mistakes na nai-encounter sa project. And actually, isa sa mga naging suggestion ko dito is, yun nga, unahin na rin yung marketplace para yung mga fees na makukuha dito sa NFTs, it will help sustain din yung mga operational cost. And at the same time, people can start building their teams or building their scholarship programs. Dahil alam naman natin na if there will be no interactions, no activities before the game release, malaki talaga yung chance na lahat ng mga tao dun sa mga vesting period ng mga tokens will only sell and sell their tokens. Being influenced by the market, being influenced by the market emotions and even the current events. At luckily, so nakita naman natin guys na their mini game is already up. Ito nga yung uh, Tamagotchi style na ginawa nila and that's something that we can look at as well later. So if we're gonna look at the roadmap, so December nagkaroon na ng egg selling, Space then launch December 22 and then yung launching ng Anchor Land will be first quarter of the year and we don't know if this will still be delayed and then yung story mode expansion so there will be multiple levels dito sa P2E so they will be launching the Tower of Creator ito na nga yung PVP nila ang target is second quarter of the year and then yung planet gameplay development will be second quarter of the year as well and nakalagay dito na yung Radix launch nila will be third quarter but actually na release na nila yung marketplace nila so guys going to the marketplace kung makikita nyo dito is nasa $40 per player mon. So this is around 2,000 pesos. So kung meron kang 6,000 pesos, then you can already have your one team. Kung ano yung magiging meta and kung ano yung mga cards or ano yung mga magandang synergy ng 3 player mons with their cards, then malalaman na lang natin yun kapag lumabas na yung game. Pero sa ngayon guys, kung gusto nyo lang makita yung gameplay ng player mon, so ito nga yung brother ko, si Prix TV. So pinapakita niya dito yung Tamagotchi style. More on feeding, playing, and and papaliguan mo yung mga player mons. And then habang ginagawa nyo pa ulit-ulit to with them, actually hindi natutulog tong mga player mons na to, tumataas din yung rank natin. And every rank, merong mga furniture na na-unlock. So every rank, I think in the future, this will be the basis how many S-Gems yung mako-collect natin within the game. So dito nga yung brother ko nakapag-collect na siya ng 540 S-Gems. And every 12 hours, dito sa lower left, meron ditong happy hour na button. Nakapag-kinlik nyo yun, there will be a task under pressure wherein kailangan yung gawin sunod-sunod, yung feeding, playing, and bathing nung mga player mons. Almost 50 S gems na yung pwede mong ma-earn on daily basis at 1 pesos per S gem. And yun nga lang marami sa atin na ayaw yung game na to dahil nga boring and parang pang bata. Target talaga ng player mo magkaroon ng metaverse within the game na magkakaroon ng maraming utility. Yung PYM and then yung S gem. Kung interested kayo na malaman ano na ba yung pricing ng S gem, so punta lang kayo sa quick swap and then punta kayo sa chart and then isearch nyo lang dito yung S gem. So ngayon, uh, S gem USDT pair and makikita natin na yung pricing ngayon is nasa 0.021 USDT. Converting to peso, so nasa piso rin siya guys. Hindi nagkakalayo sa Axie. So dito quickly puntahan lang natin yung white paper and piliin lang natin yung ibang mga topics na gusto natin pag-usapan. So one of them is mission and vision. Siyempre ang goal talaga nila dito is makapag-build na rin ng metaverse. And then para maging sustainable yung game, they are pushing na malagay yung mga social elements within the project. 
Kasi yung mga pay to win nga rin ng mga games, hindi naman tayo kumikita doon. But because of the feeling na nai-enjoy natin yung game, we keep on playing the game kahit na gumasos pa tayo doon, di ba? So yun yung target ng player mo. They are also built under the Polygon Network which means na mura lang yung fees nila. Although alam naman natin yung downside nito, hindi pa to at the level of the known networks and they are still evolving the space and the performance kaya medyo may mga slowness issues pa rin tayo na nakikita. So in the future, magkakaroon din to ng free to play na feature which is favorite natin guys kasi nga if we can have the free experience within the game and kung makikita natin na this is something na for us then we can decide if we will continue to invest in the project actually guys lahat ng mga projects always involve risk andyan yung kapag wala ng budget yung project they run out of funds then pwede na mag close yung mga project this is not a get rich quick scheme actually guys nakaka frustrate na makita na ganun na lang yung nangyayari dito na lalong lalo na yung mga hindi pa educated or experienced sila rin yung mga nagiging biktima if we see a project na they are continuously developing the features of the game and listening to the community then there is a better chance na the learning process is continuous and pwede talaga na maging successful yung game but ganun pa rin guys yung conviction ko dito ang hirap pa rin makita kung meron ba talagang magiging successful sa, sa play to earn space na to kung may paggagamitan tayo ng pera natin short term so wag na natin yung invest sa space na to but if we have extra or we can afford to lose some of the money that we're putting here in crypto or in this project then hindi tayo mararash or hindi tayo mapafrustrate nakikita nyo rin naman ngayon guys na even myself I'm learning again guys we cannot forecast ano ba yung mangyayari sa mga tokens sa mga projects ang daming mga factors sabi ko nga yung commitment ng team availability yung funds ng mga project yung right tools and right processes para ma-address yung mga miscommunication kaya let's really ensure guys na i-manage natin yung expectations natin and yung mga risk na pwede nating ma-encounter. Alright guys, kuha lang ulit tayo ng mananalo ng Gcash giveaway dito sa Proyo game natin. Congratulations Amon! So nanalo ka ng 250 Gcash and... Sabi mo dito pa shout out so shout out Amon for watching my videos. And for the second winner, congratulations Van. Thank you pag sa pagsabi mo na solid content to. Guys, tulungan niyo ako na i-share yung mga videos natin sa iba para marami pa tayong makasama and mas madali pa tayong makakuha ng mga sponsorships sa mga videos natin. Thank you for watching and see you on my next video. Bye-bye.